Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke, and on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of GLP's Stratford out of my 1962 Dunhill Shell Briar Billiard. A beautiful pipe, a tasty smoke, the pipe courtesy of our good friend Check Engine, aka Gus. I don't even know if he goes by Check Engine anymore, but anyway, it's a lovely pipe, a lovely man. Thank you so much once again, Gus. Um, uh, I'm all frazzled. I'm all razzle-dazzled today because I have been recording all day long, and many of you won't care about this because you don't watch the Stuff and Things Plays channel, but I have been attempting to get some episodes done all day long and have gotten basically nowhere because I have chosen to play two of the most difficult games of this generation for some reason on my YouTube channel, Cuphead and Sekiro. Sekiro, I was rolling around just fine, exploring new areas and everything. I got to a boss. Any of you who have played Sekiro or watched anything about it will probably know this name, Genichiro Ashina. Um, I haven't done much yet. I haven't attempted him too many times yet, but again, I'm trying to record. I have a block of time to try to get these episodes done, and then you hit a wall, you bang your head against the wall, and then you, get your no you, you knock yourself out, you pick yourself back up, you bang your head against the wall again. I need just hours, a block of just hours, to try to beat this guy. And ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And then with Cuphead, I'm at the very last boss, the devil himself in Cuphead, and he is proving difficult. I recorded for an hour and 20 minutes, I think, attempting the same boss was not successful. So everything's kind of up in the air for this week. I have not yet recorded my review of uh, Kramer's Father Dempsey. I'm hoping I will get to that this weekend. So eh, don't totally hold me to it, but I'm gonna try to get all the episodes of all the different shows on the two different channels posted when they belong, where they belong. Um, I've got three Stuff and Things Plays episodes done for next week. I'm hoping to get the fourth finished and we'll see. We'll see what happens. Or no, I've got two and I'm hoping to get two more finished. I don't know. It, it, it's all up in the air. I'm getting a little stressed out with these games. I think I need to just get a nice fun game like Subnautica or something again. That's just chill and easy, even though there are kind of crazy horrific elements to that game as well. It was sort of a chill, nice time. You could just relax. You weren't constantly having your mechanical prowess uh, challenged all the time. Your reflexes, your, your nerve. It's getting a little stressful. In other news, like I mentioned, the Kramer's Father Dempsey review will hopefully post this week. I also got something in the mail today and it dovetails with a message I got from someone. Someone was following up on a review I did quite a while ago. I've reviewed two Leatherman multi-tools on the channel before. The Leatherman Charge um, AX at the time, or AL at the time, I think now it's the Charge Plus. And then the Leatherman Skeletool CX. And someone was asking me if I use sheaths for those and if I do what sheaths I use. And that was good timing because I just got a sheath in the mail. This is a Nays custom leather sheath for, it's made for the Leatherman Skeletool. I don't really need a sheath for the Skeletool because the great thing about the Skeletool is that it's slim enough that you can just put it in your pocket. It has a pocket clip on here, or I keep a pocket clip in here. But I got this because it could also fit supposedly, let's see, this is my Leatherman Charge. Um, maybe if I stretch it out a little bit, but now I don't know if I want to stretch it out. He made it, he made it for the Skeletool. Um, and I just wanted to show you some of the sheaths I have because I got that question. The Leatherman tools come usually with nylon sheaths like this. They're not great. They're kind of functional. I would never wear one of these on my belt. I keep my charge in this sheath in my bag when I go to work because I can also fit a bit kit in the back here. And then I also have the bit extender here in this little side sleeve. So it works out well. It's fine. I also got recently, Leatherman is supposedly... Well, they've been remaking their heritage leather sheaths, supposedly with the same level of craftsmanship as they were back in the day. This doesn't really seem that amazing. It's leather, it seems kind of thin, it seems a little chintzy. This one will fit the charge, and it's nice and tight. It's fairly slim, it's, it's much slimmer. The charge in this case, 
and the charge is a much thicker tool than the Skeletool, is thinner than the Skeletool in this case. Um, and it's functional, I just don't know how long it would last. The other annoying thing, well not really annoying, but something to keep in mind is that the belt loop here is pretty low down. So this rides pretty high on the hip. The Ney case is much lower, uh, much better quality, thick, full vegetable tan leather, um, a lot nicer. And then there's this weird ass Leatherman case. This is a leather sheath that came with remember if this came with my charge originally it's not good and i wouldn't recommend it there's another leatherman case that they just came out with called the ainsworth that is supposedly quite nice uh premium leather i haven't tried it it's like 50 dollars. i'm not going to spend that much on a leatherman case when i don't use a sheath that often i keep saying case um but i have been walking around with this on my belt just to see how i feel about it and i don't know it's kind of bulky it kind of knocks around on things, and for the most part, I like to hold my Skeletool just in a pocket with the pocket clip. So, you asked, and that is the answer. And now it's time for a bit of a disturbing story on this week's Sunday Smoke. As many of you know, I live in an area where there are lots of homeless people. They congregate. There are various services for the homeless people near where I live and they make use of those services. Um, and they often camp and sleep and lounge about in areas throughout the neighborhood. So it can get kind of, you know, a little crowded here with, with people and bodies and, and, and things just laying around. And uh, the other day, as I was getting into my vehicle in the morning, I saw what appeared to be a robust woman with large chesticles, large breasts, big old tits and she was wearing what looked like you know just kind of a skimpy tank top and i you know it caught my eye because she was it was large and it was just like there in your face but then i did a double take and i realized that something was very wrong very wrong indeed because i could see the boob cleavage but then i could also see the back of her head above the boob the boob cleavage she had back boobs. I was not looking at her front. I was looking at her back and her back had boobs. Next on the docket, I have a missive from someone named Jim. This was a comment on YouTube. He says, hello. Actually, he didn't say hello. I just added that on there. But he says, I don't know if you subscribe to Markwood's Men's Breakfast Club. I do not. I had never heard of it before. But they recently, and that doesn't mean anything. I haven't heard of a lot of things. Uh, but they recently posted a video entitled Death by 1000 Cuts. It addresses the impact of the FDA deeming rules that apparently are being enforced on the pipe tobacco industry. I encourage you to watch the video. I want, I would, I would to see an in-depth update from you regarding what's going on with FDA enforcement and if it in fact appears that the days of readily available tobacco at reasonable prices are quickly coming to an end. Markwood's update, if accurate, is a gloomy overview of the future of pipe tobacco indeed. Um, I watched the video, and like most of us, I have been trying to gather information on what exactly these FDA deeming regulations that we've been hearing about for years and years are going to do. Um, nothing good, it seems, and we all know basically the, the main crux of the deeming regulations is that anything tobacco-related is considered tobacco now, basically, by the FDA, so it went into... Uh, e-liquids, vaping, anything that contains nicotine is now tobacco, even though tobacco is a natural substance that you burn. Now they're calling e-liquid tobacco. They're calling anything that you use to facilitate getting nicotine or tobacco, it's considered part of the same umbrella over, so like a pipe. A pipe used to be something that was just an artisanal thing that you could make. You didn't necessarily know what the use was for. It didn't really matter it was an object. Now it is a smoking device and it is ruled by the FDA now, a tobacco pipe. So ostensibly the FDA would have the power to 
investigate a, an independent pipe carver, just one guy in a shop somewhere smoking a pipe. It seems like he's going to have to register his project, his products now with the FDA. There's a lot of weird stuff up in the air. And this video that I watched was light on actual hard information, but there was a lot of conjecture, conjecture, wow, conjecture. I can't say that word right now. There was a lot of supposition in the video and they were sort of talking about anecdotal things they had heard about some pipe carvers um, having the FDA coming to their shop and bothering them, people at different pipe shows um, worrying that the pipe show was just gonna disappear because of these deeming regulations. It still didn't give me any real concrete information and I don't really know any more now than I did before. I do know that if you want to come out with a new blend, you have to pay what it is, I think $100,000, what it is, what is it? I think $100,000 to the FDA for them to certify that your product is okay to be released. It's, it's making it basically impossible for small companies to put out new blends and we're going to see the results of that. But I'm afraid I don't really have anything else to add to this. I don't really know anymore. And I would, I would encourage all of you out there, if you have actual information, like real facts, leave things in the comments, write to me on Twitter, um, write me direct messages on Twitter, at SAT Bradley, or you could do uh, tweets at SAT Bradley. You could use the hashtag ask stuff and things, because it'd be nice to sort of pool our resources and gather more information. Uh, thanks, Jim, for pointing me, pointing me to that video. And if you guys want to watch as well, it's uh, the Mark Woods Men's Breakfast Club, and it's death by a thousand cuts. So thank you. But now it is time for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like me to answer it on the show, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I'll do my best to answer it on the next Sunday Smoke. Also, if you are a Patreon <clears throat> supporter, you can send me direct messages, leave comments or posts on my Patreon page, and I will get to you as well. You'll probably get a little bit of preference because you're the great people on Patreon. Uh, the first question comes via Patreon from Cody Strigler. You've heard his name mentioned many times as I shout out the $25 and up Patreon patrons on the end of every Sunday smoke. He says, While I don't watch very many of your stuff and think videos, I'm a fan of games and can't wait to play Sekiro. Have you ever played The Witcher 3? No, we back to be. The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt or Into Hellblades, Senua's Sacrifice. Both really great games and I'm curious about your thoughts on them. Keep up the great work. Um, I have played a little bit of The Witcher 3. That was actually going to be a game that I played on the channel. I shouldn't even mention that because people will freak out and want me to do it. And I recorded a couple episodes, but then uh, I think Red Dead came out and I ended up playing that instead. So I may eventually get to Witcher 3. It's just so huge. It's another one of those gigantic games. We'll see. Uh, Hellblade is something that's interesting. I might jump into that eventually. It seems like a shorter, kind of cool little narrative game but we'll check them out. Thanks for your question and thanks for your support. Next, we have from Twitter, and this actually is someone who would like to remain anonymous, and I don't typically read messages that are just praise, I guess, but you'll see when I read this why I included it, because they actually asked me, they said I could include it if I wanted, it, wanted to in Sunday Smoke. This person says, hey Brad, I'm a supporter on Patreon, but I'm on Twitter more frequently. I just wanted to thank you for the work you do. Today I opened my email and saw that you had another episode uploaded and I found my mood uplifted. I struggle with being consistent and with depression, so your consistency actually helps my week have structure. But anyway, your consistency helps give me structure, which in turn helps my mental health. One day I hope to be able to join Straub and the Maniac tier of supporters for a month just so I can have a quick call with you and thank you in person. But until then, thank you very much for the work you do. Well, thank you very much. I know who you are. Um, and I agree that consistency is something very difficult when you have issues with depression, and I have in the past, I've been pretty good for quite a while now, but I think for me, the main issue I always had was getting, giving myself a structure on, in my day-to-day -day activities. Because I think when you're, impre when you're depressed, it's very easy for you to let things slide and that in turn makes you feel even more depressed because you feel as though you haven't accomplished the things that you needed to accomplish that day. And so one of the main coping mechanisms that I developed at a younger age was giving myself tasks, forcing myself to complete those tasks no matter how bad I felt, and just the, the satisfaction and the self-esteem you get from completing those tasks can actually help 
get you past the depression that you may feel. Um, and so I'm glad that if in any way me consistently posting videos can help you with that. And if anyone else out there struggles with depression, I do really believe that not routine in the sense of a rut, but having a structure, having things that you should be doing at a given time throughout the day can really help give your life a little bit of direction. And even if it seems like a minor thing, it may actually help you with your depression. So thank you for writing in. I appreciate that very much. Next, we have a question from Pa Piper at PP at P Piper 58. He says, <clears throat> Now that the Peterson blends appear to be available again, I went back and watched your Peterson reviews again. Since your reviews were pretty positive, especially Irish Oak, maybe they'd be good candidates for your revisited series. Fred. I have considered that. If I were going to revisit one of the Peterson blends, I think it's going to be Peterson uh, Irish Flake because that was my favorite Peterson blend and I would like to see what it tastes like now. So thank you for your message. This next question is from Haim, at Haim85857538 in old Bradley voice. Would you consider doing premieres so you can chat with the audience while they watch a video for the first time? Not all of them, obviously. Maybe like if you get a super vintage pipe or when you hit a certain goal on Patreon. That's an interesting question. Um, I know that there are tools through YouTube that you can actually set that up. You set up a premiere, people come into chat, and you watch it together. That's interesting, Haim. I will keep that in mind for sure. I'll have to think of something special, perhaps. A video that uh, would really benefit, I guess, from live reaction from the audience and from me. But that's a good idea. Next, we have a question from Gentleman's Corner, at Gentleman's Corn 1. He says, <clears throat> Hey Bradley, when you get a new pipe, I know it doesn't happen often. Uh, yeah, it's happened quite often lately. Do you become temporarily partial to the new pipe? I know for me, I tend to play favorites with my new pipes for about the first week or two. Keep up the great work. Um, I don't really. I really have a cycle, a rotation of pipes that I go through. And especially with a new pipe, I don't want to over smoke it if it doesn't have a cake in there yet. So I will just take it. I'll decide where in the rotation it's going to go. I put it in there and then I just work through my rotation every week. Um, I was thinking lately that I may do a video soon of my starting lineup, the pipes that I smoke every week, um, the ones that are in there now. Uh, some of my old pipes have kind of gotten pushed out of the lineup and now I have just all the heavy hitters in there. So maybe I'll do a video on that soon. Next, we have a question from Tyler Brewbrew, at Tyler Brewbrew. He says, wait a minute, did I skip one? No. He says, I hope you had a great week. I was wondering if your friend Chance was still enjoying the pipe hobby. I know it's been a while since the intro vid, but was wondering if he was still pursuing the hobby. Have a good one. Um, a lot of people ask about that. It's funny how much of an impact that made on people. I guess a lot of people can relate to trying to get a friend to try a pipe. And he, I think, kept up with it a little bit. He occasionally still smokes a pipe. He doesn't do it very often. And we haven't done it together for a while, because usually if we see each other, it's like out at a bar or something. So. Um, there isn't a good opportunity to smoke a pipe when you're at a bar drinking, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'll ask him about that again, see if he's still smoking a pipe. I know he got some blends a while ago for his birthday, I think, maybe a year or two ago. Um, but yeah, I'll ask him. Next we have, or I guess this is the last question from hashtag ask stuff and things. This is from Eric Furman, at Eric Furman. He says, I'm curious, how many times a day and week do you smoke a pipe? For you, how long does a bowl last? So this is a question I get a lot, and I know I've answered it before on Sunday Smoke, but I might as well answer it again. Um, I don't know. It varies every day. I usually smoke at least two bowls a day, often three bowls a day. Uh, sometimes more, sometimes less. Depends on what I'm doing, if I'm working, if I'm working on videos, like editing things. I'm not really smoking a pipe all day long because I'm just sitting in front of my computer and I don't really have a ti any time or a chance. Uh, if I'm hanging out with my girlfriend, I don't smoke a pipe. Usually, just it varies. I don't have a set schedule. Um, and a bowl lasts as long as a bowl lasts. It depends on the bowl. This is a pretty big bowl. This could be like a 40 minute bowl, maybe an hour bowl, depending on the blend, depending on the cut, depending on how much I'm smoking it. These are all, uh, all subject to 
circumstance, really. It's hard to give you a very distinct or def definite answer. But thank you for your question. And now, gang, it's time for the best part of the show. Every week, I like to shout out the people on Patreon who support the show at $25 and up. People like... Glenn! Thank you so much, Glenn, for being a supporter on Patreon. We couldn't do it without you. Also, Kevin Moore. Thank you, Kevin. We appreciate you very much. Derek. Just Derek. Derek is great. Derek is a $25 Patreon supporter. Thank you, sir. Also, Cody Strigla, who we heard from this week on Ask Stuff and Things. Thank you, Cody, for being a supporter. Nathaniel Hills is one of the good ones. Thank you, Nathaniel, for supporting this show, this channel, and SAT Plays as well. Thank you, Kirk Crompton. Private Eye, I can't remember if he's an attorney or Private Eye, he's one or the other. Thank you very much, Kirk, for being a supporter on Patreon. C.W. Piperman, you make this show go, you make this channel work. Thank you very much, C.W. Also, Garrett, our most recent $25 supporter. Thank you very much. And now, the maniacs the crazy people, the wild weirdos who support the channel at $100 and up a month or at $100 a month. People like Peter Straub. Thank you very much, Peter. Very, very much for being a maniac tier supporter on Patreon. And then Bob McGee. Good old solid dependable Bob McGee is a maniac tier supporter on Patreon. Thank you all so much. If you would like to support the show on Patreon, there is a link in the description box below. We appreciate it. We love it. But you don't have to. Just watching the show, leaving comments, being involved is more than enough. And we love you for that as well. But gang, I think that's a Sunday smoke. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for some videos. Ah, I'm going to try to get as much done as I can. Uh, do a little bit more tomorrow. But, you know, my God, I need a break from all the gameplay videos. I need to play an easier game. It's just, it's eating me alive, man. But anyway, we'll post what we can when we can. And uh, I hope you guys all enjoy it forward to some other stuff. I got some, maybe some journal stuff happening, so I'll keep you informed of that. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. Been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.